so you went and did it. You got yourself some chickens. Good for you. And you even watched a couple of my videos and built yourself a chicken coop. And for a while, things were good in chicken land. You came out every day and collected your eggs like a good little chicken keeper. Then one day, you notice something different. You reach in to collect the eggs like you normally do, and a chicken does this. Now that is generally the first indication that someone might have when a hen of theirs has gone broody, is when you reach your hand into the nest box and they poof themselves up. Also, they may be in no mood for you to stick your hand in there. Now, it doesn't always mean that they're broody. Sometimes some hens just sort of do that when you stick your hand into the nest box to collect eggs and they just happen to be sitting there. So if you take the hen and then put her back into the run with the other chickens and then maybe 10 minutes later you see her back on the nest box, generally she's probably broody. Now that's fine if you have a rooster and you want to have baby chicks. However, if you don't have a rooster, then there's really no reason to allow her to continue sitting on either an empty nest box or sitting on eggs that are not fertile because they're just not going to hatch. Now, some would say that it's cruel to not allow a chicken to do what a chicken naturally wants to do. But I would say that if you allow them to sit on a nest, whether there's infertile eggs there or no fertile eggs there simply because you don't want to disrupt the natural behavior of, a chi of an animal. I would say that you're putting that animal's life in danger because what they will do is they will sit there until they die because they have it in their head that one, they're going to have babies and what you need to do is get them out of that if the fact is that you don't want to have or you just physically can't have baby chicks because you don't have a rooster, you need to get her out of being broody. Now there are several techniques that I've seen people and heard about people employing in order to get them from being broody. One of those popular techniques that I hear about quite often and I've used myself is to actually get a bucket of water, of cool water, and dunk the, get a bucket of cool water and dunk the hen in it and make sure that you get her underbelly completely soaked through. I want to have to do something with that rooster. The reason that they're broody in the first place is because the temperature underneath them as they sit on a nest box has risen to a point where it has just indicated to them that they need to sit on eggs. And what you need to do and what the cool water does is it lowers that internal core body temperature of the hen and then it gets them out of that broody state. I've tried that and I really haven't found that to be all that successful. I've dunked her in some water, stuck her back in the coop with the other chickens, and half an hour later, she's right back on the nest box with a soaked underbelly. The way that I have found to get a broody hen to not be broody anymore is to simply remove her from her situation. And so what I've done is I've built this A-frame, and this is several years old. It's, it's old and rickety, but it's enough to keep predators out during the day. I will stick a broody hen in here or maybe a sick chicken. I'll stick her and separate her from the rest of the flock, give her food, give her some water. And after about three days, she's done being broody. I can stick her back in with the rest of the flock. And in a couple of weeks, she'll start laying eggs again. Now she's been sitting on her eggs. Today is actually day 21. So it's supposed to be hatching day. And earlier today, she was off of the nest box for probably a good hour or so before she came back and that's probably the longest that we've seen her be off of the nest box in the past three weeks. One of the things that you might be curious about is let's say you have a rooster you have a hen that has gone broody well do you have to separate them from the rest of the flock and that answer is sort of maybe. I've seen people be able to keep their chickens in the same flock in the same hen house we were not able to do that. Other chickens would come in, they'd see her sitting on a nest box and they would just pick at her until she'd get up and leave her nest. I thought maybe it was because of the nest box that she was sitting in. She was sitting in the very first nest box and that is the nest box that all of the chickens like to use. So what I ended up doing at first was I took her from the first nest box and then put her into the third nest box. And I did that because when no one ever used the third nest box and I thought, they would just leave her alone over there. But what ended up happening is they would come in and I think 
because she's the bottom bird on the totem pole, they just sort of pick on her wherever she's at. So I moved her over to the third nest box, and she they started picking her on her there. And then they would go and lay eggs in that nest box. So I ended up having to move her from the main flock over to this chicken coop. Now, this chicken coop, I actually have a video on. I have a video on both of these chicken coops that you see here. This was the first chicken coop that I video that I did. And I built this for a particular reason because my family and I were moving from one house to another. The kids didn't want to get rid of all of the chickens, so I needed a chicken coop that was going to be able to fit into the back of our car at the time. And at the time we had a, a 2011 Kia Sorento. And so what I did was I went out and I measured the size of the back of the Sorento and I built a chicken coop to actually fit right in there. So what I ended up doing after we had been in the new house for a couple of weeks, we ended up getting more chickens. And this one doesn't house but maybe four chickens at most. And so we ended up going up six to eight chickens. And so I built a bigger chicken coop that could house six to eight chickens. Now I actually have videos on all of these projects on my channel and if you check the description down below I'll put links to all of them. After you've realized that they're broody, you've separated them from the main flock, you've given her some eggs to sit on, now what do you do? Well, just make sure she has food, water nearby and leave her alone for three weeks. And that's basically what we've done. She's been here on these, as I said earlier, about three weeks. And I'm actually going to go ahead and stick her back inside because she's not happy with me actually being this close to her. And that's it. That's all we did. We got food in here. I have a rabbit feeder that I built a few weeks back. I have a video on that one as well. And I've just got that attached in here. Instead of putting rabbit food in there, I put chicken food in there. I've got a water container zip tied to the side of the chicken coop. And then I just stuck her nest box in there. And during the day, I leave this open in case she wants to come out and forage around, look for bugs, eat some grass. You may actually think that she's never off of her nest box because you never see her off of her nest box. But really what I find that she does is she does it early morning. When the sun comes up, we're still asleep. She's out here uh, clucking around. She started out with six eggs at first and she only has three now. From what I understand, Hens know when an egg is viable and when an egg is not viable. And if it's not viable, then she'll get rid of it. And that's what she did. She got rid of three of the eggs. So hopefully, I don't know if we're going to get any baby chicks. Hopefully we will. If we do, I'll certainly show that with you. I'll keep you updated. Until then, 